Okay, so we're here with Oliver Leadit, Kirk Hansley and Molly Marie Walsh. Yeah. Yes, oh, so tell us about your new collaboration. Well, we've been writing we've been writing together pretty solidly now for the last five years. Yeah, yeah. Um, Oliver and I met ten years ago, uh, two thousand and nine, in the the dressing room uh, ensemble male ensemble dressing room at the Lion King, the Lyceum. Mm, really. Yeah. Yeah, and we used to geek out about musicals. Absolutely. Um, in that dressing room and talk about uh, you know we, all, all the composers, what was on, what yeah. we thought about what show, and yeah, and that's kind of what, what where we kind of sparked the ideas for kind of writing in the future, and that was that was a uh, ten years ago. Yeah. Um, and kind of we didn't uh, write our first thing together until about uh, four and a half, five years later down the line, which was actually our first kind of composing project out the gate which was called The Songs I Never Sing which starred Rachel John yeah. um, at the other palace as well which was then called the St. James so yeah we, I remember we that. yeah we devised this cabaret night for her um, and that was a, we, we composed uh, one song for that show yep yeah, yep yeah. and that was our first kind of yeah. yeah the first song we ever actually wrote together was because uh, the show for the most part adapted songs that already existed uh, for Rachel John, who was from kind of a Trinidadian background, you know, we had all these songs that she would never get the chance to sing, and then we reached this kind of climax of the show, and we were like, oh, we can't find the right song, Ooh, what are we going to do? And then we were like, well, all right, why don't we just write a song? And that was that was kind of how we started going, well, let's write another one. Let, maybe the, this was fun, let's try and write another one. So that's how it kind of turned into a writing partnership. So after that cabaret, we started writing more and more material. How did I get here? How do I leave? These white walls and a window closing it around me. I wandered through my life, a dream in colors vivid me. Friends and family gone. your styles what's your influences and tastes eclectic yeah, yeah. <laughs> like us yeah absolutely. diverse and eclectic I mean we, we are from um, a, um, a vast range of different backgrounds and um, I, th I guess we're also influenced by like from everything from Tin Pan Alley uh, Tin Pan Alley era Cole Porter mm. Irving Berlin Gershwin all the classic yeah. writers with I mean all the so way the best to lyrics ever written yeah were by by those writers um but you know i grew up listening to bob marley ub40 billy holiday and carmina burana yeah you know I, I came from a really eclectic background in regard to to music and now for me and kurt whenever we write we just want to write songs that reflect whatever story particularly we're trying to tell and would prefer almost not to be reined in by any specific uh musical theatres, music genre. So yeah, we, we want to just tell the best story for whatever story we're telling. I think we, we also aim to write to a brief as well, like, um, I mean, uh, our first musical, which is, about to, which is about to be launched, which is Confessions, has a very espionage style in, in, its, in, in the music. Um, I mean, we, we also wrote a song um, a while ago called Nauseous, and we wanted to pay homage to Cole Porter. So we, we tend to kind of stick to a brief if we have to. When you walk by, stealing glances with a chance we lock eyes, your smile and your lips make me feel something right down to my hips. When this feeling comes, I can't let it go, but each time I pass you, I think that you must know. Can't help myself, pride up on the shelf. There ain't no one else. You make me nauseous. You make me clumsy and fall. You make me breathless, despite all chemistry's call. You make me nauseous. You make me full of despair. The thought that you might care. You make me nauseous. So Confessions is coming to 
The Young Palace, and Molly, you're directing it. Yeah, I guess so. So <laughs> tell us, how did you get involved with these pair? Well, Ollie and I have known each other since university in the States, so we both went to school together in Philadelphia, and that's where we're both from. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm from L.A., but I claim to be from the East Coast. <laughs> I like the sound of it better. Um, so we knew each other, and then he was here, and then I sort of met my now husband, and was coming back and forth, and then when I moved here, sort of reconnected with him, because mm. we... We knew each other, but not that well. And then we sort of got together and really found that we were on the same page in our the way we saw theater and just the way we were sort of approaching our lives at that stage. And I, I, I did see the cabaret where yeah. that song appeared. And I genuinely did say to him afterwards, what was that song about the walls? That was so fantastic. And I didn't know <laughs> that they wrote it at that point. And it really, really did st stand out as a fantastic song. And basically since then, he's sort of brought me in on things they've done. I did mm -hmm. get to record one of their songs when they were just kind of trying to get some things recorded. And then he's asked me to sort of help out with sort of another vision on staging things. And last year, last May, they wanted to get Confessions up on its feet. And he asked me if I wouldn't mind coming in and helping with the script and helping with staging it. Um, and thankfully, he also, I had a, a, a nine-month-old baby at that point, and he said, bring the baby along, which <laughs> may or may not have been a good thing. But, um, of course a good thing. Yeah, so thankfully I was able to do that. And she ended up, mom, that's great. Oh, yeah, 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 super easy. No, <laughs> hashtag we can have it all, you know. <laughs> but uh, no, so I'm so thrilled to be back again and to have known them for so long and watched their journey, and I think that what they're saying is absolutely true from an outside perspective. They really do not fit into one category, and they do, they are able to sort of adjust their style based on what the song needs or the show needs. And so, this one, Confessions, has that espionage sound, so it's got a sort of pop sound to it, but also that sort of epic orchestral mix as well and it really really works it's really exciting <laughs> British descent, um, the other is of Russian descent, and the other is of Thai descent. Um, and within that, it's really about them telling their story of events that took place. I don't want to give away too much, because we have all sorts of twists and turns. Right. Um, but uh, our first char character we meet, her name is Connie, who is uh, of British descent, and her parents uh, are of ethnic origins. And she's kind of just telling us about how she gets away from home, works extremely hard, and kind of finds her way into working for British intelligence. And through kind of bizarre circumstances, she ends up on this mission. Um, and then we have another character named uh, Inua, who uh, is of Thai descent, who ends up working for our kind of evil mastermind. 
And then we have Yulfa, who is a uh, Russian kind of KGB spy. What do you want to know? Places, names, if I have been a naughty little spy. Mm, the truth is only interesting if it is what you want to hear or what you want to tweet, if that's even the truth at all. What happened, happened, and could not happen any other way. The only part that's surprising is that the three of us are still here. This is my confession. for British intelligence, and I took a great deal of pride in my work. I was recruited for the operation at the time because I thought I deserved it. Anyone who worked as hard as I did would have thought the same. I was so naive. You never really know what you're capable of until you push yourself to breaking, and you end up miles from who you thought you were. This is my confession. I don't like talking about the past. In a way, it's pointless to try and piece together the fragments of an event that's only destined to repeat itself. We learn nothing. But if you insist on me telling my side of this narrative, then take into account that when people are trapped, they are capable of just about anything. So I'll let you decide if what I say is just fake news. All of their stories kind of collide in that they all um, are introduced to an elusive man um, who they speak of yeah nice. and it's how they and it's how the, their relationship with that man um, it, it kind of brings them together but yeah I don't want to give we don't no, want to give too much away we don't want to give too people much to, away people we, come and see it I mean the whole thing with a spy drama or espionage of any kind is that you come you see it and it unfolds in front of you yeah and so it wouldn't be nearly as much fun if we were to give away the ending keep the secrets yeah. but it is yeah. sort of keep the secrets yeah but it is it's sort of taking on the f more of the female's perspective this time. Um, there's been a bit more of a trend of that. I I've noticed at least there's the film Spy with Melissa McCarthy and then The Spy Who Dumped Me, which yeah. was Mila Kunis and Kate McKinnon. And again, it's sort of taking that genre and just spinning it and having the female voice come out. And it's, it's really refreshing and funny and of the moment too, I think. So it's the right time for this musical to happen, I think. And did you intend that when you wrote it? Was that your intention? Yeah, I Absolutely. think. Absolutely. Well, when we, when we finished um, The Songs I'll Never Sing, um, we decided we, we needed to do something straight away. And we're like, oh, what can we do? Um, and I, I, um, I, I love a lot of that espionage music. And I said to Ollie, oh, why don't we do um, a, a show about the woman's perspective? Um, and, and, and infuse a lot of that music from those spy dramas. Um, and uh, and then just over the few years, we just, yeah, just, we just, just turned into... Yeah, we developing it, developing it, and then... We decided to write our own. ...to this musical. Yeah. Um, but the um, intention was always to be about uh, about uh, um, the, the woman's perspective. Well, because I think, you know, Kurt and I, and we were discussing this earlier, uh, are very much championing the idea of any anybody who's marginalized and you know you you have two guys writing a, a story about <laughs> three women and I realized very quickly that actually being two ethnic writers it's it's really our own experience as well which is uh, you know of being told no in certain places and and the people who don't always get their voice heard and so through these women we're in a way telling our stories as much as we're telling theirs um, and so I think it's it's quite exciting to see it kind of come alive and to have them kind of tell their story yeah incredible and do you know yet who's in the cast we, we do yeah, yes yeah. yes we do so, so, <laughs> well, playing, playing Yulfa is Joanna Woodward and then we have playing Connie Tanisha, Tanisha Spring and then we have um, Inua is the Tao Nguyen. Yeah, yeah, and we're we're thrilled to have them on board. They're, uh, jo of course, Joanna is well known for the life, as well as uh, Beautiful. Beautiful, the Carol King musical. Tanisha was uh, in Beautiful as well. Um, and, and Tao was in Miss Saigon. Tao was in Miss Saigon. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. Tanisha came off of uh, Carolina Change as well. Yeah, uh, she was one of the radios in that, and yeah, I mean they're strong, talented, exceptional performers and we're thrilled to have them on board with us yeah. to tell the story. And you must be excited to working with them. 
Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I mean, I'm just thrilled to help them out at all. I mean, when, when they first brought me in, they were just like, oh, can you come in and listen to some of these songs um, and maybe look at some of the script? And at that point, I just thought, you know, I was just helping them out sort of just fine tune things. And then, and then it ended up being this full workshop. And then the, the, there was three different women for that workshop, but it was great to work with them. And it's a really exciting thing in the room to be on the other side of the table and to be in such a collaborative situation because musical theater should be fully collaborative. You have singing and dancing and acting all happening at the same time. Everybody should be working together, but it doesn't always work that way. A lot of the time, certain voices are just supposed to be quiet. And that is oftentimes from the actors that they, what you think about it, we don't want to hear. But this was not the situation working with them. They always want to hear what people think. Whether or not we'll do that change is is different, but they are absolutely, genuinely wanting people to say what they think, and it makes for a really good rehearsal process, and so I imagine it's going to be oh, a similar. Oh, yeah, situation. I can't wait. It should be different, and I think that's one of the things that Kurt and I always embrace, is live theater is live. It's not film. Uh, the, the concept of every company being the same is, is not one that we think is one to strive for. What we strive for is that each individual actor is different and exciting and exceptional in their own way. So why not use that to your advantage, you know? Obviously you have a story and you have a start point and an end point and you have to find a way to get from that start point to the end point telling that story. But the individual choices don't have to be the same choice to get there. Mm -hmm. And so we always encourage our actors to bring themselves to the work and Molly always brings herself to the work, which is why it's so exciting to have her involved with this project. And she's been involved with it for a long time with us, so yeah. knows it knows it inside and out. Um, and also, just as well, just getting a female perspective, especially uh, as someone who's lived it, and, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and who's interna international as well. And so I think uh, it's, it's brought a lot to our projects. Oh, yeah. Okay, you've just finished uh, run a Vita. Yeah, yeah I, was, Australia. Uh, I was in Australia um, doing a Vita, which was fantastic, opposite Tina Arena, and we played at the Opera House. Um, so it was away for way, it was away for nine months in you know in, in the country where all my family are, um, and it's been ex uh, you know I think while I was away we mm -hmm. um, we were, we Kansas and Leader was still working. Oh and yeah. We, um, um, we ended up putting on a concert out there um, with. Uh, with a lot of the cast from Evita, including the Tony Award winning Paolo Schott, wow. who sang one of our songs, which can all be, all of that can be seen on um, on our YouTube channel as mm. well. Yeah. But um, all, um, a, a, including some of the music from Confessions and, uh, and two of the other shows that we've, that are in the pipeline. Yeah. Yeah. So how does it feel when you get somebody of that colour singing your songs? Do you have a pinch me moment? Oh, all kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there was one. There was one moment when I'm because I had I was lucky. I had a piano in my dressing room, and um, and I I'd been there early every day, going through this material. Um, and Tina Arena walked past and going, "Darling, what's that? What's that?" And she's like, "I want to sing that." And um, and it was one of the songs from Confessions, and um, and uh, I was like, "Okay." Incredible. And then she started to have a singer. It was brilliant. Yeah. I mean, it's been a real privilege. Big privilege, because obviously, Kurt and I and Molly, we all come from performance backgrounds. But uh, some may see it maybe as a detraction, but actually we see it as, a, as an asset because we've gotten to work with some of the greatest artists and gotten their opinion of our work. And that's been yeah. really, really exciting, you know, yeah. getting to test out various bits and, and having those conversations. And obviously for when they did the, the, um, the concert out there, having Paolo sing it, I mean, goodness, any that, Tony yeah. Award winner. It was it was extremely flattering and humbling. Yeah. And yeah, and it was just wonderful to have have someone of this caliber yeah. appreciate the work and enjoy singing it. You know, it really comes to life. So when is the show on? So we um, we open on Monday the seventeenth of June, and there's seven performances, only seven, mm -hmm. um, and we close on the twenty second. There's no show on the Thursday, mm -hmm. the Thursday the twentieth, I think it is. Um, but there are seven shows during that week. Yeah. So yeah, we're encouraging people to come along. 
um, come and share their opinions yeah, and their we wanna vo- know. voice, voice we their really, feelings about it. Yeah. Because, I mean, the whole thing with us as well is we want to know how an audience reacts to it. We want, we want to engage and, and craft the show in such a way that obviously expresses our ideas, but also that the audience kind of lets us know what's working and what's not working. What, what else is the point of a workshop if not to get the very best out of the material that you have? So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think that is another strength that you have is that they are strong, confident enough in what they've written, but they are also absolutely ready for constructive notes and they're willing to let go of something if it's not good. I think some, some writers, some directors, some creators their ego gets in the way of making the best work. And they might say, well, I'm not gonna let go of that because it's the first idea they had. But they're absolutely, if you can sort of present the argument for it or to try it out, (laughs) they're like, right, we're not gonna do that. And then it makes it even better. I mean, we had a moment in the first workshop where a couple of us were not sure about a moment and then it ended up being both of them and me and the piano player and the actress all together creating a new musical section. And it was, really great it was really Mm. exciting and it's only going to make the piece stronger and it's the same way that musicals used to function there'd be the out of town tryouts where they would do the show almost a full scale production and they may cut an entire song an entire scene and write a new one before it got to Broadway I don't know if they do that as much anymore some of it has to do with just the cost of it but if you can do something like this where you can bring people in and you can really say we're willing to let go of it and then they just have more ideas they just have so many ideas I'm always impressed with the fact that you know this time around they're like oh we've got a new song and you listen to it and you're like yeah hit hit factory (laughs) (laughs) amazing it was great I'm so impressed because I'm just not someone that comes up with something out of nothing I'm just there to go that's good but can we make it a little more shiny like this (laughs) (laughs) I think I have the easy job wow you're being modest (laughs) but but yeah I mean we we want to create and we want to play and you know we want to make something new and and bust up a few of those those paradigms because art should be collaborative creative and fun and this isn't the only one. We've got others. Mm. Yeah. We've got a list of shows. This, there's, a, there's another three that we're currently working on, and beyond that, there are others. Yeah. We, we, have, a, we have our five-year, 10-year, 15-year plans with many, many ideas that are in the pipeline, and we're Cancel Leader are very yeah. much here to stay. And we want to keep working with more and more great people. Mm. Absolutely. It's exciting. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Lovely chatting to you. Yeah. yeah. You've got to get back to stay, John, tonight, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Away we go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. This is my confession.